welcome to lecture series on advanced geotechnical engineering being offered by the department of civil engineering iit bombay uh, we are in module 3 lecture 6 on compressibility consolidation and uh, we have uh, introduced uh, ourselves to the normally and over consolidated soils and we have discussed about the methods for uh, uh, determining method for determining pre consolidation pressure so in this particular lecture we will continue our discussion on normally and over consolidated soils and then we will try to discuss on over consolidation ratio under consolidated deposits and thereafter we will try to extend our discussion to the determination of the, the quotient of consolidation the only parameter in the uh, differential equation put forwarded by the Tabjagi's one dimensional consolidation theory. So in the previous lecture we have defined pre consolidation pressure and we said that it is the maximum previous uh, uh, maximum effective stress to which the soil has been subjected in the past. So the pre consolidation pressure is the previous maximum effective stress to which the soil has been subjected in the past. So based on this we can uh, classify predominantly two types normally consolidated and war consolidated and there are also some under consolidated deposits that means that very young very very young deposits. The normally consolidated deposits uh, you know soil or normally consolidated uh, soil is actually defined as a soil and it is called as normally consolidated if the present effective ore burden pressure is the maximum to which the soil has ever been subjected that is sigma dash present uh, is uh, greater than or equal to uh, sigma dash past maximum and war consolidated soil a soil is said to be war consolidated if the present effective war burden pressure is less than the maximum to which the soil has ever been subjected in the past that means that the sigma dash present is less than sigma dash past maximum that means that in the past the soil would have been subjected to very high uh, you know the effective stress and uh, you know the whatever the current stress is very much less than that. So in this case uh, normally consolidated soils are uh, what we have discussed is that uh, these are very prominent, uh, prominent in uh, along the Indian peninsula and all along the coastal line uh, the most of the marine clay deposits are normally consolidated in nature. So this becomes a challenge uh, for a geotech geotechnical engineer for uh, designing uh, you know the structures. Uh, on this uh, place. So in the natural condition in the field a soil either may be normally consolidated or over consolidated in some cases under consolidated. So soil generally uh, you know uh, become war consolidated through several reasons and we have uh, uh, several mechanisms or several reasons one is that removal of war burden pressure that means that if a past structure or if a war burden uh, was existing and if that is removed then there is a possibility that the soil might have actually gone into war consolidated state. And uh, the, some of the past structures when they were removed the, the soil still experiences uh, or remembers the stress which actually has been subjected in the past. And because of the uh, presence of the large uh, uh, chunks of ice on the soil. And, uh, and subsequently when it gets uh, undergoes a process of glaciation then the soil also uh, you, know, uh, you know in the war consolidated state and either because of the deep pumping or desiccation due to driving, uh, desiccation due to drying and desiccation due to plant uh, lift of water and the change in soil structure due to secondary compression and importantly change in pH of the soil and salt concentration also. Uh, you know can change these uh, you know the uh, convert the soil into war consolidated uh, state and weathering some ion exchange and aging of soils and precipitation of cementing agents the, all these things you know lead to uh, you know make the soil war consolidated. So in, in this context actually whenever possible the pre consolidation pressure for an war consolidated glaze should not be exceeded in con, uh, construction and compression will not usually be great if the effective vertical stress remains uh, below the pre consolidation pressure and if uh, 
if the preconsolidation pressure is exceeded then the compression will be large so if for any soil if the preconsolidation if the loading which is actually is less than that preconsolidation pressure the settlements will be small but if the load actually exceeds uh, you know to more than the preconsolidation pressure then the soil uh, uh, can change into a normally consolidated mode so in the field the ore consolidation ratio is actually defined as sigma dash c by sigma naught dash uh, uh, sigma dash o so if uh, ocr is equal to 1 that indicates that normally consolidated soil and ocr greater than 1 uh, is called ore consolidated soils in fact ocr is equal to uh, 2 uh, it indicates slightly ore consolidated soils and ocr also can be like you know 5 and 9 more than 9 and they are heavily ore consolidated soils heavily ore consolidated soils that means that the clay is very very stiff in nature and the so water content is very less and it has been subjected to very high amount of past very stress in the past and there are also some cases particularly it occurs in some lake beds and all where OC are less than one so this is called as under consolidated soil that is for example recently deposited soils either geologically or by man so the soil has not yet come to the equilibrium under the weight of the ore burden load so the status of this you know the pore water pressure is <coughs> soil is that the soil is actually not yet attained the equilibrium under the weight of the ore burden above that particular layer on particular point then pore water pressure would excess the of the hydrostatic pressure the pore water pressure would be excess of the hydrostatic pressure so this under consolidated deposits are you know something like very recently deposited soils either geologically or by <coughs> man made activities so in that case ocr less than 1 is called but predominantly ocr is equal to 1 it is actually called as normally consolidated soils up to ocr is equal to 2 like they are also treated as likely or consolidated soils and the ocr value can also go up to uh, 5 9 and greater than 9 so where uh, they are heavily war consolidated soils so let us look into some example problems before discussing uh, you know the methods for determining coefficient of consolidation so in this example problem the laboratory consolidation data for an undisturbed clay samples are given and which is actually given as e1 is equal to 1.1 at sigma 1 dash 95 kilo Pascals and E2 is equal to 0.9 at sigma 2 dash is equal to 475 kilo Pascals. So that sigma 1 minus sigma 2 the sigma 2 2 minus sigma 1 is the increase in the stress that is 475 kilo Pascals minus 95 kilo Pascals. So what we need to do is that uh, when there is an increase in effective stress then they you can see that the void ratio decrease from 1.1 to 0.9. So the calculate the quotient of volume compressibility m suffix v and what will be the void ratio for a pressure of 600 kilo Pascals uh, note that uh, you know we have to see that sigma dash c is less than 95 kilo Pascals that is the soils preconsolidation pressure is less than 95 kilo Pascals. Now the solution uh, runs like this uh, we have been given uh, the uh, data which is plotted on void ratio on the y axis and pressure on the logarithmic scale that is pressure on the sigma dash and logarithmic scale in kilo Newton per meter square and by putting 1.1 for E1 and the point lies here and for 0.9 the point lies here that is at 475 kilo Pascals. Now we can actually determine the slope of this line is delta A by delta sigma. Uh, that is delta sigma if it is in uh, arithmetic scale but quotient of volume compressibility can be obtained like this uh, uh, which is nothing but 1 by 1 plus E0. So here, here E1 is taken as the initial void ratio that is 1 by 1, uh, 1 plus 1 plus uh, 1.1 1 that is 2.1 then E0 minus E1 that is nothing but E1 is 1.1 E2 is uh, uh, 0.9 and the pressure is that 475 and 95 so with this expression which is nothing but av by 1 plus e0 what we are doing is that av by 1 plus e0 and av is nothing but delta e by delta sigma dash into 1 by e0 
So with this what we have got is that MV we have got. So by getting this MV we can actually after having so the solume so soils volume compressibility is known then you know in this in this particular pressure range then you can actually calculate what is the settlement and all. Similarly the slope of this E log P curve the straight line portion of this virgin compression curve is nothing but indicated as compression index. So the slope can be obtained like this CC is equal to the slope of line E1 minus E2 divided by log sigma 2 dash minus log sigma 1 dash. So E1 minus V2 so E1 is 1.1 and E2 is 0.9 so 1.1 minus 0.9 divided by log 4, uh, 475 divided by 90. So with this what will happen is that the compression index is actually coming as 0 0.286 compression index is coming as 0 0.286. Now as the soil is in the uh, same normally consolidated uh, state and 600 kilo Pascals is uh, you know the right next to 475 kilo Pascals. So what we wanted to know is that what will is the void ratio of a soil at uh, pressure of uh, uh, you know 600 kilo Pascals. So for that uh, by taking the same slope that is CC is known to us 0.286 and initial void ratio is known to us that is 1.1. So E3 is required to be found out. So it is nothing but CC is equal to uh, e1 minus e3 divided by log of sigma 3 dash by sigma 1 dash. Now the sigma sigma 3 dash, which is nothing but uh, you know that is new pressure that is 600 kilo Pascals. So uh, 0.286 that is uh, nothing but uh, e1 is 1.1 uh, uh, minus e3 divided by log uh, of 600 by 95 and CC is known to us which is 0.286. So with this what we can actually get is that uh, with a when the pressure uh, uh, increases to 600 kilo Pascals at the end of the that uh, you know the pressure process of consolidation what you get is that uh, E3 value is 0.87. Now it decreased further uh, from 0 0.9 to 0.87. So what we have done in this uh, problem is that the given data is plotted and uh, then we have determined what is the coefficient of volume compressibility that we have been asked. Then afterwards we determined the compression index uh, from the given data and uh, then we were uh, asked to find out what is the void ratio of a same soil with uh, undergoing the, uh, the consolidation and what is the, the void uh, you know the uh, void ratio at a pressure of 600 kilo Pascals. So that uh, you know is works out to be 0 0.87. Uh, from the given data from this uh, portion belongs to lecture 5 of module 3. From the given data uh, of pressure versus uh, void ratio we have to plot E log P curve and uh, logarithmic of pressure on the x axis and void ratio on the y axis and once we get these plots we have to identify a point where the maximum curvature prevails and from there we have to draw an horizontal line and uh, then a tangent need to be drawn uh, from that point of where the maximum curvature exists and we need to bisect this line bisect this angle let us say if that angle is say uh, delta alpha that angle need to be bisected and then from this point D a line need to be drawn and this tangent which is uh, you know the straight line portion of the virgin compression curve need to be extended and the point where it actually meets that bisected line and from there we can actually draw and that point is uh, you know uh, regarded as pre-consolidation pressure according to Casagrande's method. So in this particular problem uh, from the given data uh, what we have done is that we took point uh, D and then we have drawn horizontal line and uh, from the point D we have drawn a tangent forward tangent and then we bisected that angle and then we have drawn a line through point D and then we extended this uh, uh, you know back tangent from the straight line portion of the virgin compression curve and the point where it meets that is actually regarded as 
preconsolidation pressure in this problem we have got as 117.5 kilo Pascals. Then what we did is that we determined the preconsolidation pressure uh, from the E log P plot. So uh, here at P2 500 kilo Pascals E2 is 0 0.8 and P1 300 kilo Newton per meter square E1 is 0 0.9. So the preconsolidation pressure uh, is works out to be uh, 117.5 kilo Pascals. Now from the compression index we can actually find out here uh, E1 minus E2 by log of P2 by P1. So 0 0.9 minus 0 0.8 by logarithmic of 500 by 300 you will get a compression index of 0 0.451. So the compression index is actually obtained from the for the given data as 0.451. Now after having uh, discussed about these uh, problems now we said that uh, you know we will try to look into the methods for determining coefficient of consolidation and uh, we have introduced we have been introduced ourselves over the coefficient of consolidation term for the first time in the consolidation and compressibility module uh, uh, in the consolidation equation wherein we said that dou u by dou t is equal to cv dou square u by dou z square. So the cv term is the coefficient of consolidation. So the coefficient of consolidation cv is the only term in the consolidation equation that takes into account the soil properties which govern the rate of consolidation. So the cv is the only term or you can say that soil mechanics term in the consolidation equation and which govern the rate of consolidation. So the coefficient of consolidation cv signifies the rate at which the saturated clay undergoes one dimensional consolidation when subjected to an increase in pressure. So one more physical significance of coefficient of consolidation is that it signifies the rate at which the saturated clay undergoes one dimensional consolidation when subjected to an increase in pressure. So a knowledge of cv is essential for predicting the rate of primary consolidation settlement. So uh, you know the knowledge of from the consolidation test data there are methods which are actually there also in the laboratory as, uh, as the methods are, methods are also there uh, in the field also. Uh, particularly when you have got a soils which are isotropic then it is assumed that horizontal consolidation as well as the vertical consolidation they are same. But if the soils are say anisotropic in nature then the horizontal quotient of consolidation vertical quotient of consolidation they are different. So naturally for CH that horizontal quotient of consolidation is actually more than you know CV that means that this is analogous to when we discussed the permeability the horizontal permeability permeability in the horizontal direction is actually greater than permeability in the vertical direction. So at that time we have discussed it that the ease with which the water can flow through the uh, soils uh, is actually less in the horizontal plane than the vertical plane. The reason what we discussed is that uh, you know the as the sigma h is equal to k0 into sigma v at k0 is the quotient of earth pressure at rest uh, because of that uh, because of the less uh, horizontal stress uh, so the less uh, you know you can say that less confinement. So because of that uh, the quotient of permeability in the horizontal direction is actually more than uh, in the vertical direction. As permeability and uh, quotient of consolidation are related, we uh, based on the same analogy, we can also say that the quotient of uh, consolidation in the horizontal direction is actually uh, you know will be more than the quotient of consolidation in the vertical direction. So the quotient of consolidation basically signifies at which the saturated clay undergoes one dimensional consolidation when subjected to in the rate at which uh, it an, a, a, saturated, a saturated clay undergoes a one dimensional consolidation. Uh, when subject to an increased pressure. So for isotropic cases where identical uh, properties are there then we can take CV is equal to uh, CH. So knowledge of uh, CV is essential for predicting the rate of uh, primary consolidation settlements. There are also you know the field methods are there for determining uh, you know quotient of consolidation uh, by using piezo cones one can actually determine the uh, you know the quotient of consolidation in the field. So there are several methods are available for obtaining quotient of consolidation over a period of from 1940 40 onwards the, you know, the number of methods have been evolved and these methods compare the characteristic, characteristic features of theoretical time factor T or TV and the degree of consolidation U relationship with time compression data obtained from the laboratory. So from the whatever the data we obtained from the laboratory. So what people compare is that the U versus TV or U versus T 
curves that are either compared. So these methods compare in principle characteristic features of the theoretical time factor TV uh, and the degree of consolidation U relationship with time compression data obtained in the laboratory. So the square root of uh, time fitting method uh, which is also called as uh, root T method. Uh, proposed by Tyler, Taylor 1948 and the logarithmic of time fitting method that is log t method and also called as Casagrande's uh, method which is after Casagrande and Fadam 1940 are the most widely used methods in practice and are considered as standard methods. So we have uh, two broadly classified methods and one is uh, you know uh, you know root t method which was uh, put forward by Taylor in 1948 and uh, log t method uh, which is uh, called as a Casagrande's method and uh, which was put forward by Casagrande and Fadam 1940 and both these are the most widely used methods uh, in practice and are considered as the standard methods. So we will discuss uh, you know these two methods and then also uh, some couple of methods we will discuss uh, which are actually evolved in the recent literature. So for determining the uh, coefficient of consolidation by using the root t method. So first let us consider the root t method. Uh, in the root t method the CV values are larger than those obtained from the Casagrande's method. So the reason we will actually discuss uh, but what uh, we need to understand is that uh, we have to plot the dial gauge readings for the specimen deformation for a given load increment that means that you know we know that we have discussed that in the consolidation or hydrometer test each load will be kept for uh, about 24 hours and let us say that if you are keeping 100 kilo Pascals uh, uh, load and the less load increment is 200 kilo Pascals. So each load increment is kept for about uh, uh, 24 hours at a given definite time and uh, so for a given load increment whatever the time versus compression data uh, which is uh, the dial gauge readings the beginning of the placement of this load and uh, till the end of this uh, load and time has to be plotted on the semi logarithmic graph paper. Now what we need to do is that we have to plot two points A and B on the upper portion of the consolidation curve which corresponded to time T1 and T2 respectively note that T2 is equal to 4 T1. So this is nothing but you know we have to put plot two you know points on the consolidation curve. So this is dial gauge readings on y axis and the logarithmic of the time in minutes on the x axis and this is a semi log uh, curve and this is the u log u versus log tv uh, that is u versus tv or u versus t theoretical curve wherein you can see that uh, where this is the 0% consolidation and somewhere here when you extend this uh, portion this portion is into the secondary consolidation after the end of primary consolidation. So this 90% consolidation or 0.9 is somewhere here and this portion is uh, you know so uh, in this uh, so this is uh, you know elaborated one with the time versus uh, deformation is actually shown here. So uh, you can see that uh, the important part of uh, this uh, method is that we have to plot two points A and B on the upper portion of the consolidation curve. So the upper portion of the consolidation curve means somewhere here and where the curvature is actually changing uh, from the beginning uh, portion you can say that two points have to be put such a way that uh, the upper portion of the curve such a way that which correspond to time t1 and t2. So note that t2 is equal to 4 t1. So uh, the difference in times the t1 and t2. So t2 is equal to uh, 4 t1 with that we have to identify two points. So after having done that uh, the difference in dial readings between a and b is equal to x. And uh, so we have to locate point R which is at a distance x above the point A. So uh, what we need to do is that the difference in uh, dial gauge readings uh, uh, you know is x here. Let us say that if these two uh, the dial gauge vertical compression readings between A and B is say some x and above some x again a locate point R that means that another uh, uh, this is one, one x and this is the another x. So here what you see some initial compression some primary consolidation region and this is the secondary compression and secondary consolidation region. So locate point R. So we have located point R above A uh, which is x units above the x units uh, vertically above 
uh, this one and that uh, from through this point a draw an horizontal line and you indicate that as the D naught that is the dial gauge reading at 0 percent consolidation take that as the dial gauge reading at 0 percent consolidation D0 and this is uh, you know regarded as uh, you know D0 at 0 percent consolidation. After obtaining that the uh, you know uh, draw the horizontal line uh, RS and the dial reading corresponding to the uh, this line is D0 which we have already said and which correspond to 0 percent consolidation. Then what we do is that the project the straight line portion of the primary consolidation curve and secondary consolidation curve and intersect, intersect at T then the dial reading corresponding to T is D100 that is 100 percent consolidation. So what we need to do is that. Uh, the secondary consolidation portion and uh, primary consolidation portion this tangent we have to extend further like this and this tangent we have to extend backward and this point when you take it back and this is the point what we indicate is that for that given load increment this point is the dial gauge reading corresponding to 100 percent primary consolidation that is at the end of 100 percent primary consolidation. So beyond this it is actually entering into the secondary consolidation and secondary compression zone. So this D100 is nothing but uh, which is at the end of primary consolidation D0 at the 0 percent primary consolidation the average of you know uh, prim, uh, primary initial beginning of the uh, primary consolidation at the end of the primary consolidation is called as D50 which is nothing but D0 plus D10 by T and the time corresponding to D50 is uh, regarded as T50 okay. So note here the D50 is equal to D0 plus D100 by 2 and the time corresponded to the D50 is regarded as T50. So this line indicates that which is extended towards for example in this case it is 10.2 minutes. So we need to determine the point V on the consolidation curve uh, such that the you know the, the reading correspond to that. Uh, correspond to a dial reading of D, D0 plus D100 by 2 which is equal to D50. The time corresponding to point V is called the T50 that is time for 50 percent consolidation curve. So the in order to determine CV from the equation what we need to do is that for 50 percent consolidation uh, TV is nothing but 0 0.197. So uh, by using uh, uh, TCV by H square and H is nothing but H drainage square uh, that is uh, H is nothing but the uh, depending upon the drainage for example in case of uh, uh, consolidation test we have got uh, uh, you know this filter stone both top and bottom. So it is HDR by 2. So we can write uh, CV is equal to 0 0.197 that is the time factor for 50 percent consolidation into H square divided by T50. So from the uh, from the graph what we do is that we actually simply measure what is T50. Once we get that one we can calculate uh, by knowing the thickness of sample divided by 2 in case of uh, double drainage uh, we can get the CV value. So uh, as for example uh, here for D50 let us say uh, for D50 that let us say the time here is shown as 10.2 uh, 10.2 minutes. So CV can be obtained as 0 0.197 uh, uh, in, into 2.06 by 2 that is nothing but uh, this is uh, you know thickness uh, of the sample divided by 2 whole square uh, divided by 10.2 into 60 uh, then you know we will get uh, the coefficient of consolidation in centimeter square per minute. So in the logarithmic time method what we have done is that for a given load increment dial gauge readings versus uh, logarithmic of time we have to plot and uh, then what we need to do is that we have to indicate two points uh, mark two points on the uh, you know the dial gauge reading log t curve and uh, such that uh, t2 uh, t1 is at a or t b t2 is at b let us say and t2 is equal to 4 t1 and uh, that is the that is the time lag difference and then uh, you know that uh, the vertical uh, dial gauge reading difference between a and b point z say let us say x then and with another distance x above locate a point r. Uh, and then draw line RS through that and the point the along that uh, particular line where, where we, we along that line uh, where the, it meets to the, the dial gauge reading uh, it indicates that D0 
and then when we extending the end of primary consolidation tangent and then the, the straight line portion of the primary consolidation portion and the secondary consolidation portion when they meet at point T and this is actually is indicated or regarded as D100 and D50 is equal to D0 plus D10 and with that we can actually locate a point you know D50 here on if that point is B when we drop a vertical that is the T50. So with that what we can actually get is the by knowing T50 we can actually calculate for 50 percent degree of consolidation TV is equal to 0.197. So with that we can actually get what is the you know the so called quotient of consolidation. The next method is Taylor's root time method here what we need to do is that this is also for a given load increment. Uh, plot the dial reading uh, and the corresponding uh, square root of time. So here dial reading on the y axis and uh, on the x axis uh, square root of time is actually required to be plotted. Then that we have to draw the tangent uh, dq to the early portion of the plot. So here in this uh, uh, particular uh, this is the uh, uh, Taylor's root uh, time method. So you can see that uh, the x axis is actually is marked with a root t that is that is in minutes root t which is in minutes. So whatever the time which we take that we have to plot it in the root t scale on the x axis and the dial gauge readings whatever we record we can actually plot here. So in this one assumption is that the initial portion is actually assumed to be a straight line. So normally for you know certain soils where you know the secondary consolidation or clay soils you know the getting you know this straight line portion is difficult but in the presumption with the where if the organic pattern is say not prevalent if the soil is actually silty in nature there can be possibility that the straight line portion can be obtained. So in this case you know we can actually draw a line a tangent such a way that passing through the initial portion of the curve which is the straight line portion a draw a line which is actually is dq is here okay. So this is what the DQ is mentioned draw the tangent DQ to the early portion of the plot and draw the line DR such that OR is equal to 1.15 OQ. So we will see how OR is equal to this is O and if this is O here OR is equal to 1.15 OQ that means that OR is equal to 1.15 OQ. So so this is you know you know we 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 draw the initial portion the DQ and another line which actually originates from D again which is you know the R here. So how this has been obtained is that if you look into this theoretical curve where U versus root TV again we you know we said that you know this is analogous to U and TV and U and root TV and U and the the settlement or compression versus root T. So these two are analogous. So because because of this, what we do is that this u and you know the root to v, the nature of the curve is like this. So this is zero percent consolidation, and this is ninety percent consolidation. So this vertical height difference is 0.9, and this is one. So this triangle has this this ordinate is 0.9, this ordinate is one. So here the upper part of the u versus root to v is almost a straight line. You can see that the upper part of the uh, U TV is almost straight line. This is for you know uh, for this is based on uh, TV is equal to pi by 4 U by 100 whole square. So by using that one we can actually say that uh, you know this uh, uh, this slope of this line uh, you know is nothing but uh, 2 by root pi. The slope of this line is nothing but 2 by root pi. So uh, with this what we can actually obtain now is like this. Uh, we, the slope of this uh, straight line portion of this uh, u versus root 2 v is 2 by root pi. This is actually obtained from uh, you know for primary consolidation equation for u less than 60 percent. We said that u is equal to p by 4 u by 100 pi by 4 u by 100 whole square. So that one when you uh, simplify we will actually get uh, you know uh, 2 by root pi as the, the slope okay. So now for the straight line portion so uh, we can write that AC. Uh, AC is nothing but A, A, AC is nothing but uh, that is here for 90 percent consolidation 90 percent consolidation AC is nothing but uh, root 2 V is nothing but 80 percent for 90 percent consolidation time factor is 0.848. So 
which is uh, you know uh, root over 0.848 and AB AB is nothing but the vertical ordinate this triangle if you look into that OAB then OA is equal to 0.9 and the slope is uh, 2 by root pi then AB becomes 0.9 into 2 by root pi. So with that what we will get is that AC by AC by AB AC by AB uh, you know is obtained as AC by AB is nothing but AC is nothing but point root over 0.848 divided by 0.9 into 2 by root pi which once we simplify we will get AC by AB as 1.15. That means that the theoretical uh, curve uh, U versus root 2 V is a straight line up to 60 percent consolidation and the axis of the curve of 90 percent consolidation is 1.15 times the uh, in uh, the extension of an uh, absence of an extension of the straight line. So the theoretical curve U versus root 2 V uh, is a straight line up to 60 percent consolidation and the absence of the curve at 90 percent consolidation is a 1.15 times the absence of an extension of uh, the straight line. So uh, using this uh, logic what we have said is that the OR uh, is such that OR is equal to 1.15 times UQ is actually uh, considering the analogy and then uh, the character by using the characteristic of U versus root to V we can say that that OR is equal to uh, 1.15 1.15 Q can be set. Once we get that uh, you know once we draw this uh, particular uh, uh, you know uh, the, these, these two lines the abscess of the point E that is the intersection of DR and the consolidation curve will give you root T90 that is the square root of the time for the 90 percent consolidation that is uh, that point where this DR will intersect the consolidation curve uh, that is this point that is this point is actually called regarded as E and the vertical when you drop we get is the time required for 90 percent consolidation. So this is 90 percent consolidation this is 100 percent consolidation and uh, this is regarded as the, the 0 percent this point D uh, you know is regarded as the, the 0, point, 0 percent consolidation that is direct is reading at 0 percent consolidation. So, the value of the T for UV is 90 percent is 0.848. So, CV can be obtained as 0.848 into H square by T90. So, here also in this in this uh, this thing H is uh, depending upon the drainage path single drainage or double drainage and based on that we can actually calculate CV and which is nothing but 0.848 into H square by T90. So, this is uh, uh, was discussed already. So with that method by using that procedure which we have discussed uh, in the uh, Taylor's uh, uh, root T method we can actually find out what is the uh, uh, you know the degree uh, the quotient of consolidation. And uh, if you look into the, the chief differences between these two methods and uh, log, log time method makes use of early pre consolidation uh, makes use of early primary consolidation and the latter time responses that is secondary compression. And in comparison the root time method root time method only utilizes early time response which is expected to be a straight line. So log time method makes use of early as well as later time responses but in, in comparison root time method only uses the initial portion of the consolidation and which is uh, assumed to be a straight line. And uh, root time method should give uh, good results except with non-linearity problems arising from the secondary compression caused uh, substantial deviations from the expected straight lines. So if there is a secondary consolidation uh, you know situations when they are actually happening then uh, uh, you know the root time method uh, you know uh, will not be able to give the good results the, because the, the, ba the basic uh, problem is that the non-linearity which actually arises uh, because of the secondary compression. So most pronounced for clay soils with organic so this is uh, this non-linearity is actually pronounced and uh, you know uh, of the uh, you know dial gauge reading versus root T curve or U versus root T V curve is actually tend to be non-linear and the straight line portion may not be expected so that is for marine clays. So basically you know we can actually uh, we can put like that as you know uh, logarithmic time method uh, 
uh, says uh, for the primary consolidation and uh, it, it takes into consideration later time response that is secondary consolidation. We can say that the log time method is most suited for clays especially marine clays and uh, root, time, root time method is for silts and where the organic matter is uh, you know even for organic silts it is a question. But if it is an absence of organic uh, uh, matter then there can be considered. So log time method is actually most suited for clays and uh, root time method uh, can be said as the most suited for silts. And uh, in the recent past uh, then there are other methods which are actually uh, have come they are called uh, early stage uh, log t method and uh, the, these methods uh, you know this one of these uh, recent methods this was actually put forward by uh, Robinson and Alam in 1996 and uh, this is an extension of uh, log logarithmic time method and uh, the early stage of the uh, logarithmic time method. Uh, so here uh, what they have done is that uh, you know the, the early stages of so the, this is you can say that this uh, uh, you know the logarithmic time method uh, uh, you know was, uh, was actually extended uh, by this Robinson and Alam uh, in 1996. Uh, this was done basically by looking into the field data where the quotient of consolidation equations uh, quotient of consolidation values are very high when compared to the laboratory data. So the early stage of log t method that is uh, after Robinson and Alam 1996 this is an extension of the logarithmic time method and is based on the specimen deformation against the logarithmic of time plot. So in the first step the follow the logarithmic of time method to determine d0. So here also to determine d naught, we have to follow the procedure which we adopted. So what we have to do is that we have to uh, you know uh, we have to first plot the dial gauge reading versus uh, uh, the logarithmic of time. Then uh, we have to plot and indicate two points such a way that a and b and such a way that the vertical uh, compression difference is say x and uh, the locate horizontally on horizontal axis these points a and b are located such a that T b minus T a, T b is equal to 4 times T a and uh, then uh, we can actually determine D naught which is uh, uh, corresponding to 0 percent primary consolidation. Then what we do is that draw the horizontal line D e uh, uh, through the you know this uh, D naught point corresponding to the 0 percent consolidation and uh, uh, then, uh, then they draw a tangent through a point of inflection that is through the point of inflection where the straight line portion is there and beyond which actually there is a, you know the secondary consolidation that is the 100 percent 90 percent consolidation and 100 percent consolidation will actually come here. So extend this tangent like this and the point where this meets uh, you know this horizontal line DE is, uh, is indicated as G. So uh, this particular point is uh, regarded as the tangent intersects the line DE at G. So this tangent intersects the line DE at G and uh, then determine T uh, time T corresponding to G which is the time at UAV is equal to 22.4 uh, percent that is the which is this is the time which correspond to UAV is equal to 22.4 uh, percent for so for 22.4 percent uh, consolidation. Uh, the time factor is T v is equal to 0 0.0385. So by using this and uh, we can actually calculate C v which is uh, nothing but 0 0.0385 H d r square divided by the time for 22.14 percent consolidation. So with this uh, what we can actually get is that we will get the uh, you know the by using the early stage of uh, logarithmic uh, uh, either the consolidation test for a given load increment we can calculate the consolidation. We can calculate the quotient of consolidation and uh, we need not actually wait for the consolidation test to complete as for a given load increment as that data starts coming and we will be able to plot and then try to get uh, you know the quotient of consolidation uh, from the early part of consolidation itself. So in most cases for a given soil and pressure range the ma magnitude of CV determined using logarithmic of time method provides the lowest value. The highest value is obtained from early stage of the logarithmic time method. So this is because uh, uh, for a given soil and pressure range the magnitude of CV determined using uh, logarithmic of time method provides the lowest value 
and this is uh, the highest value is obtained by the early stage of logarithmic. So, if you compare with the conventional logarithmic time method, uh, the uh, the early stage log t method value is on the higher side. Uh, the reason is that this is because the early stage of uh, log logarithmic time method uses uh, the earlier part of the consolidation, uh, whereas the logarithmic time method uh, uses the uh, initial as well as the lower portion. That is the lower portion where you know the component of secondary consolidation also comes into the picture. So, because of this, the uh, you know the early stage logarithmic, logarithmic method log t method will actually has higher values predictive values are on the higher side. And when the lower portion of the consolidation curve is taken into consideration the effect of secondary consolidation plays a role in the magnitude of CV. So, several investigations have also reported that CV value obtained from the field is substantially higher than that obtained from the laboratory test conducted using conventional testing methods that is logarithmic of time and square root of time method. So, use of early stage logarithmic time method may provide a more realistic values of the field. That means that what this author's contention is that by using this early stage logarithmic of time method, you know it may provide it may give us a realistic values which may match with the field values. So, when the lower portion of the consolidation curve is taken into consideration, the effect of the secondary consolidation plays a role, and because of that, the magnitude of CV decreases. So, several investigators also reported that the CV value obtained from the field is substantially higher uh, than that obtained from the laboratory tests conducted using conventional testing methods like logarithmic of time and uh, square root of time method. And uh, by adopting this early stage logarithmic time method, uh, the, the values may provide uh, you know uh, have a good match with the realistic values in the uh, measured in the field. So, after having discussed you know this you know methods for determining coefficient of consolidation you know let us look into we what we have done is that in the determination of methods for consolidation we have discussed about the two standard methods and one early stage method which is given by Robinson and Alam in 1996. Now, let us consider one example problem wherein the, the, the problem statement works out like this. We have got 8 meter depth of sand or lies a 6 meter layer of clay below which is an impermeable stratum. The water table is 2 meters below the surface of sand and over a period of 1 year a 3 meter depth of the fill is to be dumped on the surface over an, ex, over an extensive area. That means that the fill extends to large areas. The saturated unit weight of the sand is 19 kilo Newton per meter cube and that of the clay is 20 kilo Newton per meter cube and above the water table the clay the unit weight of the sand is 17 kilo Newton per, kilo Newton per meter cube. So, for the clay the relationship between the void ratio and the effective stress in kilo Newton, kilo Newton per meter square can be represented by the equation uh, which is given in the problem uh, statement as E is equal to 0.88 minus 0.32 logarithmic of sigma dash by 100. So, here we have you know the you know 8 meter depth of the sand or lies a 6 meter layer of clay and below which there is a you know the surface you know water table is 2 meter below the surface of the sand. And here if you notice here the, the, the fill is actually not dumped over a uh, you know instantaneously it is dumped over a period of uh, one year. The, so, the construction period uh, is uh, takes about one year for the fill to reach about uh, they maintained about one year to reach a 3 meter height on the, uh, the soil strata which is actually given. And uh, the saturated unit weight of the sand is uh, 19 kilo per meter cube and that of the clay is 20 kilo per meter cube and this unit weight of the soil above the water table of the sand is 17 kilo Newton per meter cube. And then here if you look into this the relationship between the void ratio and the effective stress are given that relationship is actually worked out from the which is obtained from E log sigma or E log p curve which is nothing but E is equal to 0.88 minus 0.32 into log sigma dash by 100 where the sigma dash is measured in kilo Newton per meter square. And the it is also given that coefficient of consolidation of this soil 
uh, is 1.26 meter square per year. We know that the quotient of consolidation, the unit unit weight is uh, uh, meter square per uh, uh, units are meters per second, meter square per year, or centimeter square per minute. Uh, this is uh, the units are uh, the quotient of consolidation of this soil in the of the clay is 1.26 meter square per year. So what we need to do is that calculate the final settlement of the area due to the consolidation of the clay and the settlement after a period of 3 years from the start of dumping. So we need to calculate you know the uh, final settlement of the area due to the consolidation of the clay and the settlement after a period of 3 years from the start of dumping. Then uh, if you are actually having a very thin layer of sand freely draining type and existing uh, exi is existed 1.5 meter above the bottom of the clay layer then what would be the value of final and uh, 3 year settlements. So uh, first is that clay is homogeneous but uh, naturally there are some lengths of the clay and where uh, you know uh, which actually has been located generally this uh, when you have got some clay deposits they are uh, stratified in nature and sometimes there is a possibility that uh, large uh, thin sand lenses uh, can actually come. Suppose if these uh, thin sand layers are not uh, located from the soil investigation and uh, if the settlements are actually estimated uh, without considering this presence of this uh, thin sand layer then the settlements will be catastrophic in nature that is what actually we are going to demonstrate to this uh, through this problem. So here uh, if a thin layer of sand and a freely, freely draining type and existed 1.5 meter ab, uh, above the bottom of the clay layer then what would be the values of the final and 3 year settlements. So the strata which is actually given the problem uh, is uh, explained here the bottom layer is impermeable and the upper layer is uh, uh, here is sand so 8 meter layer is uh, sand here and the water table is 2 meter below the ground surface 2 meter below the ground surface and uh, uh, we can see that here the clay is uh, 6 meter thick and uh, the second uh, portion uh, what we have is that uh, what we have is that this uh, uh, you know uh, we, we have got uh, impermeable layer but a thin layer of sand is actually shown here. So this is a 4.5 meter this is 1.5 meter uh, if that so this is a 1.5 meter below the base layer and this is the homogeneous layer. So since the field covers the wide area the problem can be considered to be one dimensional the consolidation settlement will be calculated in terms of CC uh, considering the clay layer as a whole layer and therefore the initial and final values of effective vertical stress at the center of the clay layer are required. So we can actually calculate sigma naught dash sigma naught dash that is at this uh, center of this layer we know that because here the, uh, the excess pore water pressure dissipated is uh, minimal here. So uh, we calculated the uh, the center of the clay layer sigma naught dash. So this is actually sigma naught dash is equal to 17 into 2 that is above water table 9.2 into 6 plus what 10.2 into 3. So this is uh, uh, sigma naught uh, sigma naught dash that is taking uh, pore water pressure out of it. Then E naught which is uh, you know 0.88 minus 0.32 into log 1.198 because here sigma naught dash is uh, you know 119.8 divided by 100 we will get this much. Then you know what we have is that uh, E naught initial void ratio from the E log P data is 0 0.855 and sigma 1 dash uh, because here we wanted to uh, say that 119.8 plus 3 into 20. So this actually has been loaded over a period of uh, 3 years. Uh, so the sigma 1 dash is 179.8 equivalent per meter square. So the logarithmic of 179.8 divided by 119.8 which is 0 0.196, 176. So with that what we get is that the settlement is you know about 182 mm. So in this particular problem we will actually stop here wherein we actually discussed about how we can actually determine the final consolidation settlement and this is the part of the problem only wherein we have calculated the uh, you know the settlement which is coming out as if this clay undergoes consolidation the total settlement is a consolidation settlement will be 182, 182 mm. And then uh, further we actually have to account for you know if you notice that the time required for uh, filling the uh, you know the uh, placing the fill on the soil is about uh, one year. 
So then we have to do correction for the construction period correction. Once this construction period correction concept is introduced, then we will try to solve the part two of this problem, and then uh, we will try to take into the effect of say thin naturally occurring thin layer of sand and how that affects in uh, accelerating the consolidation. Generally, uh, if uh, you know this is one of the uh, classical uh, example. Sometimes if it is not recognized uh, during the site investigation, if the structure is constructed thinking that uh, the soil is uh, you know homogeneous and uh, free from this uh, lenses of sand layers and if it is freely draining type, the settlements uh, can be uh, you know the catastrophic in nature.